We're in the midst of a huge transformation where peers, communities, and workplaces are all really melding into one. Welcome to Reimagining Company Culture. My name is Christina Giordano, she, her, and hers, and I am the Senior Partnerships Manager here at All Voices. Today, I am very excited to welcome our next guest on the interview series, Chica Aloy. He is the Vice President of People and Employee Experience at Maverick. Chica, thank you so much for being here. If you want to share a little bit about yourself, for our listeners, including your pronouns, and when you were younger, do you remember how exactly you answered the question, what do you want to be when you grow up? <laughs> Christina, thank you. And thank you all the listeners for deciding to tune in today. My name is Chica Um, As you can tell, originally from Australia, go Australia, Um, Chica is a weird name too, being in the United States and being a man. So I'm actually a he, him, but I'm called Chica, which means something different in Spanish. And I'm from Australia, living now in Atlanta, Georgia. So thanks for having me here, Christina. Of course. Uh, Do you remember when you were younger, how you answered the question, what do you want to be when you grow up? There were two things, and thanks for the the nudge, two things that um, I think I wanted to be. The first one was a fireman, and the second one was a dentist, weirdly enough. And right now, I actually I actually still don't enjoy going to the dentist. I think I had a traumatic experience in like the early 2000s, uh, but I still want to be a, a fireman volunteer when I grow up. There you go. We love to see it. It is never too late or too early, as we like to say. Uh, Fast forward to today as a leader in people, HR, employee experience. Um, It's in the title of our interview series. How do you think about really measuring this dynamic thing of company culture, both in a qualitative and quantitative way? That is such a dirty question for being a first question out the gate. Uh, and I'm sure many of the listeners too would empathize that it really depends where you are in the organization on how you want to measure it, whether it is qualitative or, or quantitative. Um, it's funny because we're actually doing OKR build out for 2023 right now. And I'm looking across at the people operations, so benefits and tools and technologies. And then I'm looking across at the talent acquisition side of the house, which seem to have very quick and clear measurements around the experience that happens on both those sides of HR or people. But then you look down the middle where I'm looking at whether it's employee experience or the program programmatic or the learning and development side. Oh my goodness. It just gets crazy, doesn't it? Um, So there are a couple of ways that we jump into it. One is through our pulse survey, obviously. And specifically, you know, it's easy to measure the the places where you're always green. Um, And sometimes it takes a little bit more courage to continue to go back out to the market and say, are we really making a difference here, here, and here where you marked us in red, you know, whether it's below 50% or just on the, on the side of the house that sometimes nobody wants to talk about. So we've been, we've been grabbing those red or negative kind of sentiments and really looking over the last six months, are we trending up or are we continuing to trend down? And so therefore that helps us action with our people managers where specifically we think we need to make the the difference that's going to make the difference. Absolutely. I think measuring that sentiment is important, seeing those areas of opportunities. Uh, You mentioned one of the factors or or folks that really impacts company culture for those people managers as well. Um, I want to ask from your perspective what your role is as vice president of people and employee experience to really contribute to the company's culture and what is it clearly not? (laughs) <laughs> what is it not? Wow. Um, so quick backstory, when I joined, and I've been here just over eight months now, which seems like a short time in a startup. When I joined, we were 110. And the second day I was here, we acquired a 200 something Canadian company, which I know we'll probably touch on a bit later. Um, and, and it's ironic that they're called later too. Um, and so with that, you know, we suddenly exploded from what I had planned coming out of the interview process into into really diving into 100 people to now a foreign, non-culturally attached team integrating into our current culture and team. And so that's been my, my journey over the last eight months. So to answer your question, it's a little bit of everything. I can tell you what I definitely don't like doing. Um, I don't like... Let me pause for a second there. I want to make sure that that's not said in the incorrect way. I can tell you what I dislike. What I dislike is um, making sure that. Sorry, Christina. I think one of the 
the most exciting parts of my role is I get to be the cheerleader for everybody and every team around their team culture, which ultimately adds to the company culture. So for instance, um, this week, we've got our all-person town hall call, which has a big chunk of it dedicated to our people. And we've got some real key people initiatives that we and, and traditions that we built into that to continue the engagement on those calls. But that's not from my team. That's actually led by the business, but we are behind the scenes pulling the, the strings to make sure that when they come to that call, that they are the rock stars on the day, which I think ultimately increases the culture. Um, in terms of what I don't like, <laughs> I, I'm also like the office manager in a city that I don't live in. Um, there, there's some admin stuff that I really struggle with because we just don't have the resources yet to be out there, but somebody's got to do it. So it falls back on my desk. I think that definitely makes sense in that role of being a cheerleader and also really empowering folks to do their best work as well, providing resources, information, frameworks for success is really important. Uh, you mentioned OKRs and a lot of folks have goals. We just went through the process of uh, measuring our uh, goals and really setting OKRs as well. When you think about uh, your role as an executive and as a leader, how do you kind of measure your effectiveness? Communication. Or at least that's where I'm seeing that the leaders that are not being very successful are falling down. That's coming from both the survey as well as real-time experience. If you are not over-communicating in today's busy and um, you know pivotal, I say pivotal, we're pivoting every day to go a different direction towards an OKR, um, it's that over-communicating all the way down and making sure that that's what we call speak back or spoken back to you so that the communication is seen as clear. What I've run into a lot, Christina, is I say something to you or you say something to me and we both walk away thinking two different things. So the speak back's always about that clarity at the end of the uh, the communication. So I'm going to put it down to that. That's where I'm at currently as an effective leader. I think over communication is really important, restating what, what you heard as well as you were talking about too. Um, I think it's Brene Brown who says, the story I'm telling myself is this, is this aligned with what you just said? Mm yourself too. So that alignment is so important. Uh, I have uh, a lot of questions around that company culture in practice at Maverick as well. Uh, we know that people are looking for different things from their employers and that has really shifted over time, especially since the pandemic started. Uh, one study found that 47% of employees reported that their stress was higher than anything they'd experienced in their career, um, but only 37% agreed their organization really understood what they kind of needed both in their personal lives and for their families. So how are you really showing up for the full lives of employees inside or outside of work? That's awesome. We just did a, a benefits comparison between this later group and the Maverick group. And, you know, one, one of the things that's highlighted at Maverick through all of the comments that we continue to hear is that work-life balance. Now, what does that actually mean? Does that mean that I can take a lunch? Does that mean that I can take 10 days off? Like, what does that mean? And every, and every listener is going to have a different opinion around that. Um, the one cool thing I like about working here at Maverick and what I've experienced is that when you're off, you're truly off. So if my direct report comes and says, I've got a doctor's appointment today, I'm not pinging her. That's just a company. Call. We don't ping you when you're at the doctor's. We don't ping you when you're out of office. I um, mean, if you say you're taking Friday, um, we're definitely not going to go after you on that either. Another cool little um, perk that is given on the later side of our business that we're looking to implement in 2023 for Maverick as well is what they call a long weekend. And it's four times a year. This is really cool. Four times a year that's attached to a statute holiday or like a Labor Day or a Memorial Day, right? It's, it's pulled back and they give the Friday off before because then everybody knows that on that Friday, everybody's off. Because Christina, when you take a day off and I take a day off, sometimes when you're off on vacation for summer, you may have that need or that pull to feel guilty that you're missing out or that things are dropping without you. But this is a dedicated day where everybody takes the day off so that everybody can be completely clear. I love that example because you're right. When people are taking off at different times, which is also okay as well, you can be kind of receiving emails or you need someone for something else. So that company-wide kind of day of reset is really important to operationalize that and create those non-negotiables uh, for that time as well. I know one of the other things that we really wanted to talk about too was uh, speaking of frameworks was that employee value proposition. Um, mm. 
talk about that acquisition as well in a moment, but where did you really start in that initiation of Maverick's rebrand of the EVP, if you will? Yeah, so when when we looked when I first joined and I looked at our careers website and we started just exploring what does that we, we created a couple of focus groups as well um, from the senior level to the mid level to all the way the individual contributors and something that we realized was when we asked what is it to work at Maverick there was a little bit of misalignment and so in doing that we brought together their sentiments we we gathered from them through specific questioning you know what would you foresee it as a, as a vision cast as well as what do you feel it now. And we created three buckets that we really felt the um, each level was speaking towards when they thought of working at Maverick. And so that became that value proposition that we have now internally at least launched. We haven't necessarily externally done that because we're still integrating with later. And the three buckets were, it's, it's quite cool. It's And it's not original, um, but it makes sense. It's like connections, the first one. How do I as an employee connect to my role? How do I connect to other people? And how do I connect to the company? So it's always my role, other people and the company or other colleagues in the company. The second one, so connection's the first. The second one's collaboration. How do I get permission to collaborate in my role, permission to collaborate with other people? And how as a company are we also creating experiences that allow people to collaborate? And I can tell you about one of those cool ones that we just finished. It was awesome. Uh, and the third one is celebration, which is also the same event. Um, how do I get celebrated in my role? How does my team get celebrated? And how does the company celebrate itself as well as the people that work for it? The three C's um, mm. to see it there as well. And those are really important uh, questions to ask yourself. And again, that word of, of alignment as well. So people feel like they are experiencing similar company cultures, uh, no matter where they are in the organization too. You mentioned kind of that acquisition of another um, Canadian uh, organization as well with around, I think it was 200 employees too. So not a, a small organization either. How did you really ensure that folks felt like they are part of this new co-created company culture, uh, thinking about kind of connection, collaboration and that connectedness too? Yeah, that's a great question. And this is not a perfect science. If anyone on the call works with people, you know that people are messy. And that integrating or acquiring or merging with another fully established company is a hot mess some days, right? Um, and what we're doing is we're really articulating what is that vision that we're going for. And therefore, even though both of our values are almost exactly the same, said with different words, how can we move forward now with a shared set of values? a shared set of pur a purpose and a shared shared vision so that as we work, it doesn't matter in which business unit or product line, we continue to expand um, and integrate the cultures. The other, the other layer on top of that is you've got the American um, Canadian culture, which on the side, as anyone knows, you know, when it comes to laws and HR processes can be completely different. So there is still going to be some nuance depending on where you are. And we're looking now globally, we're, we're in Romania, we're in the UK, we're, we're across different parts of the world, but just how do we continue to expand and blast out those three C's as loud as we can? Um, but definitely not a perfect science. Not a perfect science. Unfortunately, there is no magic wand that helps you with this. You have to continue to iterate and, and be agile as well and be open to folks' feedback too and continue to create a best-in-class experience for for everyone, which means different things. Uh, you mentioned kind of the key to being an effective leader is around communication, over communication, um, and transparency is, is a value and something that a lot of folks really want to, to emphasize, especially now in a remote or hybrid uh, environment too. Can you share kind of a tangible example of effective and transparent company communication? Uh, yes, <laughs> sometimes maybe too transparent. Uh, <laughs> we, we have our combined both business units a call and the majority, I want to say just over half of, oh, sorry, just under half of that entire call is spent on Q and A again, articulating the vision, articulating where we're going and also fielding a lot of the sniper questions from those that are still skeptical or just don't have enough background information. I'm watching the CEO um, people leaders tap dance being overly transparent in a good way with what is actually happening, but also leaving the the kind of sentiment again that it may not be emotionally satisfying right now for everybody on the call, but this is actually where we're at. And so acknowledging where we are now and where we want to go tomorrow is, is massive. Um, one of the other tangible examples recently that we faced was um, around compensation transparency. 
And so Maverick actually made the move to bring everybody up to the certain percentile so that everybody knew no matter where they worked in the company, they were getting paid at the X amount percentile of where their band is for their role in their career. So I think that's a massive move. It's a very heavy financial investment on any company to do that because you could be underpaying somebody by 20 and now moving them up 30. Like that's a massive jump for a, for a person that's straight out of high school, uh, out of college, excuse me, or, or um, wherever they are in their career. So it was, it was very courageous. I thought on the leadership and very transparent to say, we're going to continue to work this down the line. Absolutely. Compensation, equitable compensation and having that communication is really important. And we know that, you know, based on different people's work experiences and whether it's day one or or year five at uh, the organization as well, people will feel connected or more connected at different times. Um, Again, based on their unique perspective at the organization, how are you really thinking about creating or really helping to foster those meaningful moments of connection, um, especially in a hybrid workplace where folks are scattered throughout? Mm-hmm. Now you're talking my gas. This is what I love to. <laughs> this is what I love to do. This is what I. This is what keeps me up at night. And what I wake up for, excited in the morning. Um. <coughs> pardon me. One of the most fascinating parts of my job is, you know, I really care about the engineer that never gets. T- any any light because they're down there digging on product but i also care about the um the executive leader that's got to manage a football team of 16 business development representatives uh to make sure that they're healthy wealthy and wise as well when they're walking through their day so an example of this is recently we had what we would refer to as mav fest maverick festival or for the four festival for maverick and whether you are in a denver office or a boston office which are our two key hubs or whether you were virtually remote because a third of our um, workforce is also remote, everybody, this was an all skate, all play. We all got to do this. So what we did was we shipped out boxes with do not open on it. And basically they arrived three weeks before the event. So we, we egged them on, on every call. Hey, have you touched that box yet? Good. Don't touch it. Right. So we're building anticipation towards this box. Then surprise two days before the event, Every single person in the company received a VR Oculus Meta headset that we rented. They didn't get to keep it. And inside that was the virtual world that we had created. And so on MavFest, after we played a couple of games on a Zoom call, we left the Zoom call running and everybody stood up, you know, right behind their computer, went and entered the visual, uh, sorry, the, the, the VR world for two hours, well, maybe an hour and a half. And we messed around. We were playing paintball we were shooting um dragons and orgs with bows and arrows and again what's cool is in this virtual world i would walk up to christina and she would have a different avatar on and we would get to know each other even though we've never met each other in real life it was super cool we took a group photo maverick branding was everywhere and then when we exited we came back on that same zoom call which by the way our social media team had a field day looking at people on vr headsets without them knowing on the on the zoom call um and then we all opened up the boxes and inside was a cool little um like north face fest and we have another tradition here um whereby after 90 days you get your call sign the company maverick was named after top gun um and so the call sign every individual after 90 day gets kind of traditionally anointed or knighted if you will uh, in whichever tradition you want to think of with their call sign. Uh, mine is Chicka Boom, for instance. And so we each have that. And so that was just a, a really cool example of how we created a moment, a little bit of investment from the company, but everyone's going to remember that as one of the highlights of the year where we brought everybody together to collaborate, connect and celebrate. I love that. I've definitely crowdsourced this question and asked folks, you know, how they're thinking about creating connection, whether they're fully remote, hybrid, or in person as well. And nobody has said uh, an example like that before. So we'd love to to see it there. Uh, Chica, is there anything that I didn't specifically, you know, ask that you want to share with folks who are listening or any kind of key insights you hope people really bring with them after hearing our conversation today? Yeah, thanks for the great questions, Christina. I think that, um, you know, there's a lot of experts that are predicting what 2023 is going to look like, especially after this traumatic two years. And I think that the companies, if there was anything I was hoping you'd ask, it's it's like, you know, what's going to make companies successful in the future? What's going to make people organizations successful in the future? Um, and as much as, 
you got a glimpse into the sexiness of here's a quick investment for everybody. I think it, as long as we keep recognizing our people, um, that's going to continue to engage our people. The moment we take our foot off the pedal, recognizing them in whatever way, whether it's a Slack message, a present in the mail or a quick note, um, the moment we take our our foot off the accelerator, recognizing people for the hard work that they're trying to accomplish in a remote environment or a hybrid environment that kind of sucks still, right? After the pandemic, um, we all crave people. So I think the best part of of, of what I, I get to do every day is walk around the circle and high five people and make sure that they feel valued. And that definitely speaks to what you were talking about earlier in terms of supporting people, having that open-ended conversation, being transparent, over communicating uh, and just being in, in connection with one another too and celebrating uh, each other as well. Uh, Chica, thank you so much for being on Reimagining Company Culture this afternoon. Thanks for having me. Of course, and as a reminder for folks who are listening at All Voices, we really believe in both employees and employers being seen, heard, and understood. And know it's a requirement for the business to really succeed overall. Have a great rest of your day, everyone.